optimization problem. This problem has a lot of work, although the problem looks very simple. Let's read the problem. Find the area of the largest isosceles triangle that can be inscribed in a circle of radius. I want you to solve by writing the area as a function of h. So let's take a look at the picture. We have a circle and then we have an isosceles triangle. What is isosceles? Isosceles means these two sides have the same length. So this length and this length are the same. And also this angle and that angle, they are the same. All right. Can be inscribed in a circle of radius. All right. So let's uh, find we are trying to find the area, find the area. So that means the primary equation must be related to area. What is the area of a triangle? The area of a triangle is base times height divided by two, right? But there is a problem. The problem is we don't have base, we don't have height. So how do we find the base and height? First, let's take a look at this dot. This dot is the center of a circle, right? So that means six is my radius from the center to the edge of a circle. So I am going to draw a triangle right here, this one right there. So I'm going to draw that triangle. And then we know that six is the radius. And this one, I am going to call that H. And then uh, we have the base, the base we don't know. All right, so what is the relationship of these three sides? So this is a right triangle. The relationship is using Pythagorean theorem is we don't know this. The square of the unknown quantity plus the square of the height equals to the square of six. All right, so uh, what is this represent? This represents the half of the base of the triangle or I mean, half of the base of the isosceles triangle. And this one is also the base of this small triangle. So let's put this in terms of the question mark. So this question mark is equals to 36 minus x squared, right? Or let's just keep that as a six square. So six square, and then that is equals to the square root of six square minus x squared. So this is the base of the small triangle. What about the isosceles triangle? So for the isosceles, then the base will be 2 times the square root of 6 square minus x square. So that will be the base of the big triangle, right? Uh, what about the height? What is the height? The height of this? Uh, we should use a different color. So let's use something that can be easy to see. So this is a 2. So overall, this base is 2 times the square root of 6 square minus h square. And then what about this height? This height right there. The height is... So this is my h. This is the center. So that is uh, so from the center to the edge of the triangle, that is uh, also 6. So the height will be 6 plus h. So now let's write the secondary. So what's the secondary? So the secondary basically is here. This is the secondary. So which is that square plus h square equals to 6 square. And then what about the primary? The primary is area equals to, oh, that one is too hard to see, right? So the area is equals to, area is equals to base times height divided by two, which is multiplied by one half. And then the base is two times the square root of six square minus x square. And the height is six plus h. All right, so that is my area. And then the next step is we have to take the derivative, set that equals to zero, and then find the critical number. That is a lot of work, trust me. So let's start the derivative. So the primary is a. They want me to do it in, as a function of x. So a of x, that is 1 half times 2 times the square root of 6 square minus x square. And then we have 6 plus x, only one variable. So we are ready to move on. So a of x. That is equals to the square root of 6 square minus x square and then times 6 plus h. So this one we will take the derivative right here using 
product rule. So still remember the product rule, fg prime plus gf prime. So a prime h, a prime of h. So that will be the square root of six square minus x square. The derivative of that is equals to one and then plus g, which is six plus h. The derivative of the square root, you bring this one half down, six square minus x square negative one half using Qing rule. The derivative of 36 minus x square is multiply negative two h. All right, and then we try to factor this. So since we have, um, Before we factor that, let's clean this up because I see some something that can be uh, simplified. So a prime of x. So this is the square root of six square minus x square. All right, don't write the one anymore. The negative two and the and the two. So that becomes a minus. So let's erase the plus and then put a minus in there. So we have a minus because there is a negative right here. The two the twos are cancelled. We have uh, we have the h times 6 plus h and then we have the negative one half right okay so that is 6 square minus x square and then negative one half okay so here how about this uh let's factor out a negative one half a prime of h let's factor our negative one half so that will be 6 square minus x square we factor our negative one half and then what goes inside this square bracket so in the second quantity, we have negative x times 6 plus x, right? What about the first one? The first one is 6 square minus x square raised to the first power because 1 plus a negative 1 half, you get the 1 half back, right? When you multiply these two quantity, you get the square root back, okay? And then uh, this one, we put the 1 half into the denominator. So a prime of x, the square root goes to the denominator, 6 square minus x square because of the negative exponent. And then the top we have a 36 minus x square and then minus 6x and then plus x square. So the x, 6x minus x square, not plus, minus x square. And then we have negative 2x square minus 6x plus 36 divided by the square root. And then I want to factor the top so that, because we have to set that equals to zero. Uh, if you have your own way to find the critical value, go ahead. But this way, the way I use it, that helps me to find the critical number very easily. So I'm going to factor out the negative two. We have x squared plus three x minus 18 divided by the square root. Because when I factor a quadratic expression, it is easier when the leading coefficient is positive. So this one, a prime h, we have a negative two out, the square root inside in the denominator, six x squared minus x squared. So x squared plus three x minus 18, you factor that, you have a x plus six, and then x minus three. Now you set that equals to zero. You set that equals to zero. Uh, the Instead of writing 6x squared, you can change that to a 36. Okay, so how do you solve for solve for x? So first, when you multiply both sides by the denominator, then you don't have a denominator to work with anymore, right? So multiply both sides by the denominator. You have negative 2 times x plus 6 divided by x minus 3. You have that equals to 0. So that means x equals to negative 6, x equals to 3. They are the critical numbers in theory, right? But can h be negative? No, h is the length, right? So h cannot be negative. So this one, we have to get rid of that. It is a critical number of the function. However, in terms of an application problem, length cannot be negative. So we have to get rid of the negative. So h of equals to three is my critical. Number. Right? Okay, moving on. 
when h is equals to 3, what is the next step? The next step is we use the second derivative, right? Do you still want to do the derivative one more time? I don't want to do that one more time. So since I don't want to do a second derivative test, I will just put my x equals to 3 to a number line to create test intervals. So when x is equals to 3, we have that right here. x cannot be negative, right? So everything less than 0, we can ignore that. That creates two intervals from negative infinity to 3, and then from 3 to positive infinity. All right? And then you test them. So x equals to 2, x equals to 4, and then you plug it into the a double prime, 8 first, a prime of 2, and a prime of 4. So where is the a prime? The a prime is right here. All right, you plug it in. So plug in the two to the first derivative. Uh, this one, I did the math already. So that is positive. Plug in the four to the first derivative. That is negative. So you have a decreasing and then increasing. When x is equals to three, we have a critical number. So that means this is a local. Oh, actually, got this the other way around. We have a positive and then we have a negative. Got this the other way around. We have a negative, so when x is equals to 3, we have a local maximum, right? So the area is maximized, so we say that the area is maximized when x is equals to 3. So when x is equals to 3, what is the base? The base of the isosceles triangle, so that is 2 times the square root of 6 square minus h square so you plug in the 3 you have 2 36 minus 9 then this is the dimension of the base and then the area you have one half the base times height so which is 3 plus h and then that is equals to 27 times square root of 3 so that is the area so the area they are looking for the maximum find the area of the large isosceles triangle, right? So this is the maximized area. And then in order to maximize the area, this is the base of the isosceles triangle. So let's draw the picture one more time. So here is the triangle and then the base from here to there, that is six times root three. And then this is the center, the H is equals to three and then uh, the radius of the circle is equals to 6 and this is equals to 6 all right so that will be all in this in this video i will see you all in the next lesson